Hey guys, it's Jake with AG Russell Knives. Today we're talking about kitchen knives. I'm gonna go over some of the do's and don'ts of kitchen knives and help you learn how to take care of your knives so that they last as long as possible. The first thing to know about kitchen knives is that each knife has a limited lifespan on its edge and just normal use in the kitchen will eventually dull the knife. Just going through food and hitting the cutting board is gonna dull your knife just slowly over time. But there are a few things that will dull your knife 10 times faster than just normal use. Your knife edge is made up of a thin sliver of metal and contact with hard materials can dull, chip, or malform your knife edge. Here's a quick example of an edge that's been heavily abused. It is no longer sharp. Which brings us to tip number one, do not expose your knife edge to hard materials. So let me give you a few examples of things to avoid. Do not use your knife to cut on top of hard surfaces such as ceramic or glass plates. As the thin edge of your knife comes into contact with these hard surfaces, the edge is dulled. Another common mistake is to cut right on top of the countertop itself. If you think to yourself you've cleaned it recently, it should be good to go. But this hard surface is really bad for your knife. Your knife is not designed for cutting ice, nor is it really designed for chopping nor is it designed for cutting frozen food. This will dull and potentially chip your knife. Just like ice and frozen food, bone is also a hard material and is too hard for your knife. Your knife is not designed to handle bone. And especially do not chop bone, you run the risk of chipping your blade, which will be much harder to fix than a dull blade. This brings us to tip number two, always use a proper cutting board. Even the flimsy green one is better than nothing. The FDA has approved both wooden cutting boards and plastic cutting boards. Plastic is easier to sanitize and put through the dishwasher, whereas wood has antibacterial properties. To some degree, wooden cutting boards are still porous, so you cannot run it through the dishwasher. You do want to wash them well, and you want to make sure that you dry them well. Occasionally, you're going to want to recondition your wooden cutting board with a mineral oil or other similar protectant to help keep bacteria from worming down into the wood. Keep in mind that with just regular use, your cutting board is going to develop scores and scrapes and cuts. Bacteria likes to hide inside of these scores, so it's important to keep those cleaned out carefully. This one is an example of a cutting board that needs to be resurfaced or replaced. If you're getting these marks on your cutting board, that's good. It shows you that it's a nice soft material and it's not doling your blade too much. But it's bad in that you are probably putting too much pressure on your knife and it's cutting into the board and doling it. Last quick mini tip. When you're scraping food off of a cutting board, use the spine of your blade, the back of your blade. This will help preserve your edge. Thanks for watching part one of how to take care of your kitchen knives using your knife. Stay tuned for part two, how to clean your kitchen knife.